but not for us. That's a great idea. He's already an ally. He's made his rule. It's supposed to be 45 tomorrow. Is that right? And rainy 46. And rainy 46. That was all warm. Tony Bennett kind of weather, right? 73. Which will be higher, the temperature at the school? Right? Jeez. <laughs> Jump in. <laughs> With RJ, he was um, really on a pretty hot streak there from the perimeter up until the fing finger injury at Syracuse, and he's yeah. struggled yeah. since then. Is the finger still bothering him, or is he just now just kind of in a little bit of a shooting slump? He tells me that it, it does not bother him, but he does have tape on it. And so. I can only, you know, when I played, and I didn't want any type of tape on my fingers because I wanted to have the feel of the basketball. But he does have tape on during practice and during the games. But he says, you know, since the since the Syracuse game, he hasn't gotten hit there before again, and he hasn't said one time to me that it's ever been an issue. But you're right, his percentages have gone down since the Syracuse game. And um, my hope is is that um, it'll start going up starting tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Hubert, with Armando and Pete obviously not really playing much against Virginia, Pete being out and Armando being injured so early, have you sensed that both of them are a little more fired up for this matchup given that they had to miss it the first time around? I don't. I think they're fired up. Not. I think the whole team is fired up, not because – Armando and, and Pete missed the first matchup. I think they're fired up because we get an opportunity to play against Virginia. Uh, just a really good basketball team. We're, we're back at home, and you know it's an important game for them, and it's an important game for us. I think that alone uh, has our guys really excited. I was going to ask from the teleconference. I got they cut off, cut me off, but. Um, <laughs> Do you talk to your team? So I was going to ask this before. Like, uh, on the what conference? The teleconference on Monday. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. So they ran. Okay. Long time okay. ago. They okay. ran. They ran. So I, meant to, I meant to ask this before the, the last game, but have you talked to your team or have you talked to your, your, to your team about like these games is kind of a must win to get to the tournament? Do you mention that at all or is it all just single game, focus on what's ahead of you? It's all single game. Um, Focus on what is in front of us and what is real and what is in front of us and what is real is our game against Virginia tomorrow. Um, that's always been my focus and that's, that's the way that I've approached each game and that's the way that I approached the game against Notre Dame and that's the way that I'll approach, um, that I have approached uh, playing Virginia tomorrow. Do you think the players and Haley kind of realize the situation they're in with having to kind of win? I don't know what situation are you talking about because, you know, when you start mentioning like must win, my definition of must win is you must win. So like, if, like the NCAA tournament, if you, if you lose, your season is over. In the ACC tournament, if you lose, you are no longer able to play in the ACC tournament. And so I use terminology and communicate with them. I'm straightforward and direct, and it's a very important game for us. <clears throat> but it's a very important game for us because it's our next game, and our next opponent is Virginia. Hebrew, this... This, sorry, it's always happened, doesn't it? <laughs> this might be overly technical or dorky, but um, the, no, okay. the, the other night in, in South Bend, with the way Notre Dame was doubling Armando, it seemed like they, you know, the baseline guy was already there before he caught the ball. I mean, but the stuff you found with Pete sort of in the high post a little bit, the lobs over the top, like, does that does that look there moving him Pete up there? Does that give you maybe something different to try to attack these double teams with? Did you find something there maybe with that look that could benefit you the way these teams are defending? Well, it did help, you know, Pete in against Notre Dame. He led our team in assists. Yeah. And you know when they double team 
Armando and specifically in Notre Dame, they were coming from the baseline. And so you treat it the same as a, <clears throat> excuse me, as a double team on the perimeter. You know, we, you got to find an open spot. I felt like Pete did a really good job of finding open spots, particularly at the high posts, at you know the top of the key or the free throw line area, to be able to make a play. You know, one of the things I don't think anybody shot the ball well, but 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 Pete did. You know, he had five assists. He had a season high five offensive rebounds, and his ability to pass in that area really helped us out. And because of his size, to be able to throw it over top to Armando, yeah. I thought was really good. And so that's something like moving forward um, that we've talked about, and we will definitely use. But at the end of the day, put two guys on somebody, somebody is open, and we had open shots from the perimeter. We're going to have to hit them. Yeah. It's just. That's what it boils it, down to. It, 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 it is what it is. Yeah. We're going to have to make some outside shots. And we have had wide open looks. Yeah. And we're going to have to make them. You know, very rarely can you win a game in conference on the road shooting, what do we shoot from Notre Dame? 33%. 33%. Shot 8% from the three-point line. Right. So, tomorrow against Virginia, we're going to have to knock down some some outside shots. Peter, what do you feel like the team took from the first half against Notre Dame that, <clears throat> that they'll apply tomorrow to prevent that kind of slow start that you talked about? you know, not being pleased with their energy in that first half and not even being able to coach basketball because you were coaching that one. Yeah, you know, I in the first half, I thought we were really good defensively. I thought we made some mistakes that allowed them to be able to score, but I, I felt like our inability to be able to score impacted our energy and our effort and our mood. And that's one of the things that you know I talked to the team about after we played Notre Dame is that that can't that can't impact our energy, our effort, whether our shot is going in or not, and that that always has to be a must. And and maybe they were a little nervous. I'm not sure, but in the second half it changed, and it changed from the start of the second half and it made a huge difference in us and with even before the 16 minute mark it was a one point game where it was tied and I really felt like it was because of not focusing on us missing shots but raising the level of our intensity on, on both ends of the floor. How much do you think it helps your team to punch through a close game like that this week especially I, the way things have gone? I just thought it was huge. I, you know, prior to Notre Dame losing five out of six, I'm sure confidence was wavering, a little fragile. And then you got to go on the road and play against a Notre Dame team that I think is extremely dangerous. And to come away with a win when you didn't shoot the ball well offensively, I think is tremendous encouragement to them. Um, you know, one of the things I always tell them is, you know, let's check three boxes, defense, rebounding, and taking care of basketball. In the second half, we did that. We only had one turnover in the second half. And so I, I think it was really good confidence for them. And also, they were able to take a deep breath and go, we won. You know, sometimes you just need that one to build that confidence and assurance that um, they were doing things the right way. and. My hope is, is that it continues with that confidence against Virginia tomorrow. Pete said after the game the other night, what you just said a moment ago about how when the shots weren't falling, it sort of affected the energy and the mm -hmm. efforts. Um, is that kind of human nature when it's been going like that for a while and you have lost five out of six, that's going to seep in a little bit? Yeah. And if so, as a head coach, how do you kind of fight against that? Well, one of the things that I, I and you guys know this, I'm just – I try to be as encouraging as positive and 
doesn't matter what type of situation and, and during that time I wasn't very encouraging at halftime. <laughs> I went back on that one. <laughs> we heard about that. <laughs> I wasn't. I was encouraging from a different direction, okay? <laughs> but it is, you know, I, I, I felt that. I felt, and I have felt, through the course of this season, our guys playing with added weight. I really do. I think the added weight of being preseason number one, I think the added weight of the expectations, I think the added weight of this team looking like last year's team, the added weight of, well, you guys lost four in a row, the added weight of, you guys are out of the top 25, the added weight of the NCAA tournament, and just being free enough just to play. And, and that's why and that's why I always focus on them on you know what is real and and what's straight ahead and what we can control. And what we control is how good we play, how well do we play tomorrow. Let's prepare to the best of our ability. Let's play our tail off tomorrow against Virginia. And let's see what happens. To that, I sense relief. We talked to four players there, and I sense considerable relief from those guys after the game because they got a win. They got to talk about a win. <laughs> have you seen that as well? I, have. Sort of a bit of I really have. I really have. You know, it's. I did feel a relief. Um, after we played Notre Dame, it was. I don't want to say the happiest locker room this year after after a win, but it, it was. I felt like every everybody in the locker room. It was people were laughing. They were excited. They it felt relieved. Um, felt confident. It was it was different after the Notre Dame game. Just on that point, I mean, I don't have a question. RJ told us uh, they all can't be rainy days. Sometimes you need some sun. And he just sort of told us that unprompted, uh, yeah. which I was like, all right. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. to what you're saying. No, it is. I mean, you know, it's, there are going to be rainy days, and it's nice to have a sunny day. <laughs> <laughs> and. I sensed that from from the team after the game, and it was it was really good to see. I know you you do like to focus on the real and what is actually happening, but what would a win over this Virginia team at home mean to you? Mean to the team, and what message would it say to the country watching you guys? Well, what it would mean to us is that we won two games in a row, and. It'd be another sunny day. <laughs> it really, it really would. You know, it's it just would be really good for us. And um, but other than that, nothing, nothing more than having a chance to compete against Virginia and being fortunate enough, if we do, to be able to win, um, to be able to see the smiles on the guys' faces and. Um, to see two things, one, the confidence to grow, and more relief. I think two things. And so that would be, that would be really good to see. Looking back at the first Virginia game, what was it that Jalen was doing, particularly in the first half, that was so effective? And do you anticipate using him, obviously not to the degree that he was used at Virginia, but do you anticipate using him sort of in that vein, same vein tomorrow? Yeah, he was really good. You know, he gave us, you know, when Armando went out, you know, he gave us an option to be able to score consistently down low on the post, and he was really good. Um, you know, where he was able to catch the ball, where he was able to score. I don't remember Virginia even double-teaming him. They'll double-team him. Now, <laughs> um, and because I, I felt like he was really good, Virginia changed their lineup midway through the second half, and they went small. 
and that's where they were able to take the lead. And they put in more, uh, you know, Vanderplas, who's he's a big, but he's a perimeter player, and they played small. And we really struggled with that, particularly on the defensive end. And so uh, Jalen did play really well, and my hope is he plays again really well tonight. <coughs> Hubert, to that, Good. to that point, um, it looks like they that's the lineup they've used ever since your that game up there. They've it gone, does. They faced Shedrick out, right, yeah. and they've gone with Vanderplas mm -hmm. and, and Jalen Gardner. Um, you know, Notre Dame wasn't huge either, and I, one of the guys was telling us that one of the emphasis was three, four, five, just crash uh, the offensive boards. I mean, this looks like another game where you'll have a size advantage in every position uh, if they stick with that. I mean, is that send well, them send them to the offensive glass again like well, they did? Well, every game, I mean, that's something we emphasize all the time. Three, four, five, get to the offensive glass, and for the first part of the year, we just outside of Armando, we just didn't really have a presence of getting second chance opportunities. Obviously, against Notre Dame, that was a huge piece. You know, when you don't shoot the ball well from the outside, you've got to get steals, you've got to get to the free throw line, and you need second chance opportunities. So we got to the free throw line, we got second chance opportunities, we got 18. Um, whether Virginia plays a small or big lineup, because Virginia is so good defensively, you need more cracks to be able to score. And so offensive rebound is going to be a huge key for us. We have got to crash the board to get second chance opportunities. So whether they play small or big, three, four, and five have to get to the offensive glass. It's just going to be huge for us tomorrow. This question is not necessarily for Virginia, but um, what does an ideal offensive possession uh, look to you other than scoring, getting a good shot? Anything else you want to see? I mean, I take away your obvious answer there. Anything else you want to see? No, you haven't. Is there anything else you want to see on an offense possession, your offense, that is the key to, to that? Look, I, I, I want to score um, points in the paint. I always tell the guys that, you know, we want to dominate points in the paint. We want to attack the basket through post penetration and offensive rebounds. Plain and simple, period, the end. I like Armando close to the basket, being able to score, get fouled, in ones, help us get into the penalty. I like when our wings attack the basket through post to, uh, through penetration so that they can score, so we can get fouled, and we can get to the penalty, get to the free throw line. I think we're really good when we attack the basket. That's what I want. Um, we look for that all the time. That's our first option is to be able to score around the basket. We want to dominate points in the plane. Here at the end, it's been probably the second half of the season has been very difficult to get there. You know, with Armando having at least two to three players around him, with two to three players staying in the lane, helping off uh, some of our players, it's very difficult to get there. And so, um, in order to do that, we've you know we've got to get out more in transition. We've got to get second chance opportunities and we're going to have to knock down some perimeter jump shots to be able to loosen up but I want to score at the basket that's the higher percentage shot and that's where that's where I want the ball to go. We've got time for one more question please. Amber you've got you obviously understand shooting obviously from your career as a player and coach Lebo obviously you know effective shooters this this group is it is it shoot, shooting selection that that is a, an issue is it a, a mental thing at this point with the not outside shots not falling I mean, it, you know, because obviously they've proven they can hit them, but it, in big moments. But can you put your finger on anything now? Is it, or is it just one of those things that it's in their head now? Well, I, you know, I think, I think that sometimes it is shot selection. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do. In large part, I don't think it's that. Um, it could be. It could be a confidence is you know. You know, wavering a little bit, uh, but there also, the, you know, there's some times that, you know, the ball just doesn't doesn't go in. I have not seen anybody, with the exception of Pete, that I've seen from like a technical standpoint that I've mentioned, you know, to the guys. I, I tell Pete all the time, if you can just get a little bit more arc on it, that's your shot looks great and straight, but it is it's flat. You have to get more arc on it to give it a chance. And so I tell them that. Uh, talk to Caleb about shot selection, about um, this is a good three, this is a, this is, this is a tough three. Um, but at the end of the day, we've been wide open. 
and we just haven't been consistent in terms of being able to shoot the basketball. My hope is is that um, I don't think obviously we're not a team that can make 15 threes like we did against Clemson, but I think we're a better shooting team than our percentages. But our percentages don't lie. That's where we are. We're last in the ACC, and um, but my belief is we're better than that, and my hope is in. The rest of the season, we can shoot better because we're getting open looks. Coach, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Hubert. Yeah. Thank you. Hubert, you